There have been some significant changes in the React world, for instance, server components, which had been in development for years, have finally been released. If you want to catch up on these updates, or if you're looking at your code from last year and wondering why it might not be the best practice anymore, let's review those changes. React.js was created to enable developers to build dynamic UIs that were difficult or impossible to achieve with existing tools at the time. Dynamic in a sense that when you press the button, it immediately triggers these changes in the DOM without reloading the page. And the best use case was SPAs, the applications that or websites that have pages that load in line within the same page. Another concept that React introduced is the concept of components, which are reusable and self-contained pieces of code that can be composed to build complex UIs. That made building web applications more efficient and scalable, and because of this component-oriented way of designing apps was a better way to build apps in general, people started using React for everything. However, the drawback of client-side interactivity it is, is that it's not as effective for content-oriented and data-heavy applications. This is React's team's effort to expand React's capabilities. That's why you may come across comments comparing React to PHP or criticizing it for trying to be full stack and shifting its focus. How are they trying to extend the React programming model? That is where React server components come in that allow writing code that runs on the server, providing access to backend services while retaining a component-oriented model. Having a server component allows for structuring applications and choosing which client components to render dynamically, resulting in less code in the client. Server components stay on the server and only rendered output is sent to the client, providing benefits similar to frameworks like Remix loaders. Instead of React rendering your whole application client-side, such as in the case of single-page applications, React now gives you flexibility to choose whether to render your components based on their purpose. If we were to split the page into smaller components, you'll notice the majority of the components are non-interactive and can be rendered on the server as server components. Or as I mentioned before, it's hard to handle content heavy use cases, but now you can keep that large stale content closer to the server and for smaller pieces of interactive UI, that is where client components come in. With server components, the initial page load is also faster and client-side JavaScript bundle is reduced. Why? Because we are rendering some of JavaScript on the client side. The server components are not the only new concept that React introduced. They are also changing some of the patterns, but more about that later in the video. Now to take a look at how to make full use of server components, this is what Next.js did. Probably already aware that they introduced an app router and now all components inside the app router are by default server components, while client components can be marked using this use client directive. And these are the some of the differences among client components and server components. So what are server components best for? That's for fetching data, accessing backend resources directly. For example, if you want to run queries for your Firebase, that is best to do in here. Also keeping sensitive information on the server, like access tokens, API keys, which was is issue before. If you include your API keys in the React previously, then when the JavaScript is bundled, it is actually exposed on client. So everybody go visiting the website can access your API key. For me personally, I'd like to manage and store API keys for different projects. So I don't have to look through that env files and I use NordPass password manager, which lets you store and access sensitive information from anywhere. Another great benefit and the reason I use NordPass is that you can easily share your API keys or other secure nodes with your teammates. And this saves time and ensures that the information is sent securely via the platform that encrypts your API keys, for example, compared to like sending it over an email or like uploading to a public GitHub repository, which exposes and is a security threat. 
and also our past business sponsor of the video so if you sign up using my code web decoded you'll get three month free trial and link for it would be in the description of the video Going back to previous topic of the video, another benefit of using server components is that it helps us reduce, as I mentioned earlier, the client-side JavaScript. Well, for anything that's related to interactivity, like clicking, changing inputs, lifecycle methods, this all go, and also browser-only APIs, go to client components and to better understand the paradigm we can take a look at this example of where we are ready to split and have that bridge of adding use client so it would be in case of a navigation some layout which is not interactive but if we try to add on click even handler to the server component we will get an error so that is something like defining use client that we should keep in mind if we want to have a client component Another reason I mentioned Next.js is because it's one of the frameworks that React on their new documentation suggests to use alongside others. So if we go and click on installation guide, start a new project, we're going to see Next.js is one of the way. It's either then Remix, Gatsby, or Expo for React Native. And you probably saw comments like, oh, create a React app. Is that the, it's not, it, you can still use it, but they do not recommend it and recommend using a framework. Understand why we might need an effect using this example where inside app.js we have a to the component, a search bar and the total number at the end. And this is how you might be used to calculating the total number by uh, using use effect hook and updating total number state when tutors gets updated so we pass tutors as a dependency to use effect and when they get updated they trigger uh, this change of total number state and this is um, obviously like use case is oversimplified uh, for demo purposes but this usage of use effects is more complicated than necessary and it is inefficient too because it does an entire render pass with a stale value for total at first and then immediately when the to the state changes re-renders with the updated values and let's see how many times it re-renders so first i'm gonna remove the comments for console log so we can just understand um, how many times it happens so i'm gonna console log every time use effect is triggered and also console log how many times the component re-renders itself. So save these changes. I'm also here opening up the terminal and refreshing the page. So let's see, first re-render was triggered twice. Then we have a use effect and another re-render because this use effect changes state, right? So in total, four re-renders in initially before I interacted in any way. Now let's see if I add um, Tudo, for example, unit tests and save it. It will of eight renders. Now let's see what would happen if we console logged this use effect. Would it cut down the renders? Let's save it. Total value, this I'll show how to update, but I'm going to reload the page. So initial reload we had previously with the use effect, it was four. Now we have two. And then if we add a test, now it becomes four. So now the question is how, what is the correct way to calculate total? That would be just removing um, this state and calculating at render. So instead of having a state, we'll say constant total number that equals to two, there's that length. That way we cut down uh, the extra calculation. So twice re-render, now it becomes four times. So we should think that when something can be calculated from existing props or state, don't put it in a state, instead calculate it during rendering. Sometimes you may want to reset or adjust a part of the state on a prop change, but not all of it. 
For example, the to-do list component here receives to-dos as a prop and it maintains highlighted IDs. So when user uh, clicks the item, but we also want to clear out this item when to-do list gets updated. So the way we're doing here, and you might think of doing it is once again, using use a fact and adding to do's as a dependency. So set highlighted would pass null and it would reset the state. But this is not ideal because when this happens, every time to do's change, first highlighted is rendered with its default value, then a change in to do triggers effects and the update of the highlighted will cause re-render of to-do list and its children. Instead, what we can do is calculate the state directly during the render, but we would have to store the information from previous renders like this, which might remind you of component did update and lifecycle days of React, but per React new documentation, it's still better to resort to that if you can't calculate the state directly, which we did previously without like storing previous props rather than updating the same state in a use effect. You may have been using use effect also to fetch the data inside it when a page loaded. And this is where you're wondering where to do that instead now. And it will be inside server components. Doing something like this inside Next.js app folder file, where, as I mentioned, we have server components by default is possible. And this doesn't mean you can fetch data on the client side, but it is recommended if you do so to use third party libraries such as SWR or React Query with those uh, client components. Since a lot of people have mixed feelings with the recent changes, I would love to hear in the comments your opinion. And as for me, I think it's crucial for us as developers to stay on top of this changes to build the most efficient and high quality applications. And if you'd like to learn about Next.js a prouder and practice with me some of the new React paradigms, you can click on the video on the screen. And don't forget to try out NordPass Business using code WebDecoded and the link is on the screen as well as in the description.